Hello, welcome to JJM Leadership Conversation. My name is Joe, your host for today. JJM Leadership Conversation aim at empowering you with a message of hope and also changing leadership narrative. So today is going to be very interesting as we continue to have a conversation with leaders in society, leaders in business, and also leaders in faith. Of course, in terms of leadership, we believe that all of us are leaders. So you don't have to sit back and say, I'm going to wait for Mr. So and So to solve the issues on my backyard. You have to take or assume your leadership position because you and I are leaders. Therefore, leadership is not a position, it is an influence. On that note, I want to welcome my guest today. And that guest does not need any introduction. He is the founding pastor of Bethesda Bible Church that is in Midrand, a writer of note who has written a book, My Faith Walk. It was written and released in 2016 to commemorate his 30th walk in Christ. Of course, if you do the maths, you will realize that today is 34 years down the line. On that note, let us welcome this great man of God that is joining us in this leadership conversation. Pastor Tiba, you're welcome. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Joe, and welcome to the viewers. Interestingly, one of the things that I forgot to mention, Pastor Tiba, mm -hmm. um, in my introduction was the music as well, because mm -hmm. I believe that you have influenced the music narrative in our country. Mm -hmm. I remember in the early 90s, if not the late 80s, where we were looking at the music that you wrote and that particular song, it is beginning to rain. Wow. That song was a hit, uh, Pastor Tiba. Mm. And to some of us who are very young, we still remember that song vividly. Of course, before we start our conversation for today, do you really want to tap into um, that song a little bit on, on what it did mm. on you as a leader in faith? Well, wow, thanks a lot, Pastor. Um, very interesting. Uh, in those days, it actually is the mid-80s, not 90s. I wrote that song on the 24th of October, 1985. Uh, why I still vividly remember the day we were going to sing it in Kronstadt, in Free State, and uh, I was left alone with the guitar. They went to follow the guy who was supposed to transport us. He was not showing up. So I picked my guitar, do we -o, we -o, dong, do we -o. and as I was playing, wow, this is, when the guys came back, instead of us rushing to go, we, wow, what a song. Mm -hmm. In those days, we used to celebrate a new song as people celebrate a newborn babe. Wow. I'm disappointed with today's musician, especially gospel musician, that they like to redo the song over and over and over, like chewing gum until it loses its flavor. <laughs> they are not coming up with new songs. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, Pastor, Pastor Tiva, and I, I love it. And I'm hoping that with the opportunity that you have to influence our, you know, our young people, young musicians out there, you can do some, some of the workshop, man, where you can share with them um, some of the skills in terms of songwriting. However, I want to move to my topic for today. Yeah. Um, what brought us here today, we want to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on churches. Impact of COVID-19 on churches. One of the things that I picked up with some of my listeners and some of the followers, when we have got a, you know, a casual conversation, some of them were talking to me about churches closing, mm -hmm. and some of them, uh, you know, something that you never thought it will ever happen in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And some of them are telling us that some of the pastors are struggling out there. So today's question that I have and that we are going to look at with my guest is, can the church survive beyond COVID-19? Can the church survive COVID pandemic? Pastor Tiba, here is the conversation. Can we survive? Can we still come back as a church uh, beyond COVID-19? We can survive and we will survive, uh, although it's going to be... Uh, a big challenge to the church. We must remember when lockdown was announced, when our presidents or our fellow South African 
stood and say, <laughs> fellow South Africans. Fellow South Africans. <laughs> and then he changed, he says, fellow compatriots and whatever you call it. So now he's calling us fellow comrades. <laughs> fellow comrades. <laughs> when he announced it, it was a shock to everybody. Correct. And, 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 and when the churches were closed, I remember in our organization, Church Leaders Empowerment Foundation Africa, abbreviated CLIFA, we even went to an extent of threatening to go on a strike, on a, on a march against government. But after some deliberation, we wrote a, a petition yeah. and we sent it to government, which was honored. But it was a shock that I've been in church all my life. Mm -hmm. For the first time on a Sunday morning, I wake up and do not know where to go. I'm a pastor, mm -hmm. but can you imagine an ordinary member of the church? He's not going to church. And, you know, you lose that corporate worship mm -hmm. and coming together. You know, when you come together, the Bible says one has got a song, one has got all this kind of, and you, we lose that. And we got TV. I don't know if you are a soccer fan or a sports fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a soccer fan. I support a chief that promotes love and peace. <laughs> I'm not a violent person, you know, I can't go for bones and that, the like. That, that team that has been sitting on position number one forever uh, due, to, due to COVID. Eh? Yeah, and yeah. we can con uh, pronounce them uh, champions. Now, when you are in a stadium and watching a game, mm -hmm. and when you're watching it on TV, you can go and make a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. if, if you are a lady, you can even change your nappies for the baby and whatever. Not in the stadium. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere is different. So the same with church. Mm -hmm. When you are in a corporate env environment, you, it's different. You can't compare it to watching TV. Mm -hmm. Now that has brought a big shock, shock in our lives. I, I, I've got a pastor whom I'm pastoring. I do pastor pastors. Okay. He called me. He was so angry and down. He says, Pastor, these guys are not giving. They are not tithing. Because mm -hmm. there are those who give because they love God. There are those who give because they are af afraid of afraid the pastor. Of the pastor. Okay. So they are no longer afraid of you. You, you can only <laughs> call them. And the, the guy was so angry. He nearly quit the ministry. He's mm -hmm. got a big church, about 600 members. Okay. He was so angry. He says, I am quitting. These guys are not my members. He says, less than 20 people are giving. Mm -hmm. So what it, what it did also is that it affected the income of the church mm -hmm. in a very serious way. But if you look at it positively, it mm -hmm. also helped you as a pastor to find out, are these really my members? Who is really mine and who is not? It's, it's like it, 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 it kind of naturally sift and get you your real members mm -hmm. and your fans. I want to hold you there. The question is, are these people my real members or not. But one of the things that I want to follow up on, Pastor Lijadi, is that looking at the members that we have now, some of them are beginning to find themselves outside of their churches, mm. outside of the four walls, mm. outside, you know, of the space where a confined space in terms of, um, of preaching and understanding. Um, if I'm sick now, of course, I need to pray for myself. I have to find God mm. myself because chances are for you to come and pray for me is going to be, the chances are very slim. Mm. So these people are finding God, you know, at their own space. What do you say about that? Do you think that the day that we're going to go back um, to our churches, are we still going to find those members coming back? How are we making sure that there is connection or communication flows in a manner that we don't lose traction in terms of our members? It is never going to be as it used to be, as okay. they call it, we, we are in a new normal. Okay. Uh, there are positives that we can draw from COVID-19 and, and especially the lockdown. Uh, one obvious thing is that death is real. So it's much easier to preach the gospel now. Okay. And you say, you can die tomorrow and then you need to. So that's a reality. The other thing is, I, I had So my, maybe wait, wait. Yes. Here, Pastor, 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 yes. Here. Do you want to tell me that it makes gospel sense to preach the gospel in fear of death. Unless if I didn't hear you correctly on that point. Uh, I know that's not what I mean. Okay. Uh, we cannot preach based on fear. However, fear can also help. You know, sometimes when you slow down driving, it's because of fear. So that is positive fear. Okay. So the other thing that I want to follow up on, let's go back to the topic of 
um, the resources. You spoke about the money. You spoke about um, the pastors that are struggling now um, with the income because some members are not even picking up their, their, their telephones. But what I want to look at at this stage is, of course, as pastors, human beings, mm -hmm. business people, mm -hmm. and the society, we must appreciate that COVID did not only impact um, only the church. Mm -hmm. It has also impacted um, the livelihood of people, mm -hmm. which some of them are your members. Then how are you making sure that there is no misinterpretation in between your members? Um, and of course, you mentioned, uh, Pastor Tiba, that you represent some leaders coming from Clifford. How do you make sure that your members at Clifford do not have a very negative attitude towards their members without understanding what the members are going through during COVID? How do we make sure that we close the gap? Um, I, I've used uh, the analogy of sifting. Okay. Sifting separates the good from the bad. Now, if you are a pastor and you were manipulating your members into giving, Okay. I've got, uh, God told me there are 10 people here who are going to give 10,000 each. Okay. It's, it's difficult now to do it through Zoom. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> or on Facebook. <laughs> or on Facebook. <laughs> so, if you were teaching your members and you allowed them to be independent to know that when I give, I am giving to God okay. and this I'm doing it freely and I'm not giving because I'm scared of the pastor, mm -hmm. they would keep on giving. Remember, in churches we have got this system when people bring their tithe, they must mm -hmm. come to the front. You know why we do that? Okay. It's a strategy to expose those who are not giving. <laughs> because and if, now during lockdown you can't during do During lockdown that. you <laughs> can't do that. Now, okay. now your income is bound. But what does it do? It makes you to to, to, to retreat and go back and reevaluate. Was I doing the right thing or mm -hmm. not? Was, was my calling genuine? Mm -hmm. Because uh, like it or not, there are people who are called, genuinely called by God. Mm -hmm. There are people who are called by finances. Mm -hmm. And when times like this happen, the sifting process happens, and we will remain with fewer, mm -hmm. but quality. Okay. So, like, uh, one thing that I've seen, uh, since lockdown, our church has grown. Okay. With leaps and bounds. I used to preach to a group of people every Sunday, mm -hmm. sitting and and and... Since lockdown, we introduced cameras and we go live. Do you know how many people I'm reaching? I'm reaching somebody in New York. Mm -hmm. I'm reaching somebody in Zambia. Mm -hmm. Somebody in Lusaka, Lubumbashi, mm -hmm. you name them. Mm -hmm. uh, India. Because now I've got more access. So the Bible says in Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, mm -hmm. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. If you are called by God mm -hmm. and you are called according to his purpose, mm -hmm. there is no pandemic that can destroy. The Bible says, uh, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. persecution, can tribulation. So if you got God's calling, during this time, God will give you a strategy to be above the waters. Because we, do, we are not pastors because everything is smooth and things are running properly. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I'm saying the pandemic has brought a challenge. But at the same time, mm -hmm. it has asked the church to go back as leaders to say, hang on, were we doing things the right way here? Mm -hmm. Who actually was my member mm -hmm. and who was my fan? Wow. Wow. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what an answer indeed. One of the things that I want to follow up on, Pastor, Pastor Tiba, is the issue of agility in the church. Mm. Um, when this announcement was, was made, um, and of course you did mention that your organization, Clifford, you also wanted to, you also wrote mm. um, to the president raising your concerns mm. um, around, you know, the chest closures. Um, I want to check first that, number one, do you think that the church was agile enough to respond to, you know, to, the, to, to the challenges of COVID in the speed that it deserves? Do you think that we, we responded or, or your members have responded in the manner that is befitting the challenges that we're dealing with today? Um, what I've seen, um, when, when the announcements were made, we were all taken aback. Okay. And, 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 and it was like we were hit below the belt, mm -hmm. unaware, mm -hmm. and, 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 and most of the pastors, we got confused on, as to how do we do. Some people were not preaching, waving any online services and whatever. Yes. But 
be that as it may, it has hit the church in a serious way. Okay. I've had a lot of pastors complaining that why don't we write to the president and say other industries are getting relief, relief, relief but relief we're not answer. getting. And yeah. I said to them, okay, let's go ahead. But I said to them, just like any other industry, when you we go to the government mm -hmm. and say we need relief for the past and many pastors are fighting for the relief they mm -hmm. want us to fight for the relief mm -hmm. i said the government will ask you two things are you registered <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean pastor do you want to tell me that some of your members are not formally registered i don't want to tell you that some of our members are not formally registered okay because it will look like i'm reporting my members okay <laughs> I, I will tell you that South African law okay. does not demand that churches should be registered. All right. Remember okay. the time we were dealing with the CRL yes. about the commercialization of churches? Of church, we yeah. even went to parliament. The South African law, which is the loophole in our law, mm -hmm. you can just walk out today, call 10 people, and tomorrow you've got a church. Okay. You collect tithe and offering. You don't have, if, when, even when you go to the bank to open an account, mm -hmm. they don't ask, are you registered? All they want is, do you have a constitution? You can just draft a constitution and tomorrow. Now, but when we go to government and say, we've got so many churches yeah. and pastors who are not getting paid, mm -hmm. the government will ask, were they paid <laughs> before COVID? Were they paid before COVID? What and, a question. Okay. And, and uh, yeah, they were paid, but they were not paying SARS. Jesus says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar yeah. and to God what belongs to God. Okay. Uh, and most pastors are not registered. Most pastors are not paying tax. Mm -hmm. So the government will say, are you registered? Are you tax compliant? Then we can give you a relief. This, so it will be useless for us to go there. Because wow. most of the churches are not complying. So in a way, the, because they are doing it in under, other industries. Yes. That's why the taxi guys are not in good terms with the government. Yeah. Because government says, we'll give you so much. Wow. Are you registered? Mm -hmm. Uh, and tax UIF for your employees, pay as you earn for your employees. All those compliance the answer, areas. Yeah. The answer, when the answer is zero, the mm -hmm. government can't give you the money. Indeed. That is the same problem we're having in the church. Okay. But I think, uh, the, let, let me just try to, to look at this, at this question once more as I follow up. Um, I believe that COVID somehow is giving us an opportunity to take a step back. Mm. Um, what is it that you are finding from your members? Um, and and I, will, I will keep on saying your members here, mm. um, but it may not be that you represent everyone in South mm. Africa, mm. but I, I want you to speak from your position of comfort mm. so that you don't find yourself trying to represent everyone. Mm. But do you believe or do you see that there is a, an appreciation of these changes? There's an appreciation of, this, uh, of the new normal. Are you finding some of your pastors, your peers, your counterparts, having to change their ways of doing things and the, the way they operate um, in ministry. One thing that you would have noticed is on a Sunday, mm -hmm. you can attend 20 churches or 30 if you want or 50 <laughs> in, if you in, want. In actual fact, when you mentioned that, you're just reminding me that of course, I think on Sunday we are spoiled for choice. Yes. So, 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 so it goes back to my question. Mm. How are you going to make sure that your membership is retained if we are spoiled for these choices that are all out there? Uh, that's a very good question. Okay. Uh, remember my sifting analogy? Mm -hmm. Sifting, you are actually saying, I want to bring the bad out of the good, okay. or the good out of the bad. Okay. And that's exactly what is happening. Uh, if I'm going to have a conference next year in March mm -hmm. and hoping that lockdown it's, uh, it's over and yeah. we are back to normal yes. or the new normal mm -hmm. and I want to invite Pastor Baloy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm using Baloy because there are so many Pastor Baloy's in South Africa. Okay. You can't <laughs> because I wanted to ask you which one. <laughs> the, any of the Baloy's. <laughs> okay. And, and Normally, I do not invite a person I know I, I, and, and, unless I know what they preach. Okay. Now, how easy is it? I just go to Pastor Baloy's profile. Oh, okay. I hear you. And then, oh, no, no, no. This is nonsense. Let me try Pastor Joe. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, in a way, it's while people think, look at it as an, ex, uh, an opportunity to express themselves to everybody, mm -hmm. it is also an opportunity to uncover yourself and show your nakedness. Mm -hmm. That's why I always advise pastors and leaders that mm -hmm. don't go 
to the public unless you're fully dressed. Because you can, will can, expose... Can, 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 you, can you just repeat that? Don't go to the public mm -hmm. unless, unless you're fully... It's not, there's nothing wrong in being naked at home. Okay. <laughs> but when you go to the public, be fully dressed. Don't expose your stupidity. Okay. I'm sorry to use that word. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, I mean, when you listen through Facebook and the like, mm -hmm. and you say, what? What is this guy talking about? Mm -hmm. the, has this guy been trained? Yeah. <laughs> Does he even understand what the scriptures are talking about? Mm -hmm. So much as it's an opportunity for people to market themselves, it's an opportunity for people to expose them. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. It's a paradigm shift. Okay. And whenever there's a paradigm shift, we all start from zero. Okay. Uh, now, my church is not that big. I've got friends who've got very massive churches. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We all start from zero. We can only have 50 now. <laughs> Whether you've got 10,000, you can only have 50. You can only have 50. Now, okay. when there's a paradigm shift, mm -hmm. we all start from zero. Okay. If you do not jump at the agility now, okay. if you don't jump, don't jump in quickly and say, this is a new, new normal. New normal. Yeah. I need to pick up my game. I cannot preach like I used to preach to 50 people. Mm -hmm. Now I'm preaching to people I don't know. Somebody wanted to invite me and say, oh, okay, pass. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's promoting and, exp and, 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 and also exposing. Let me tell you something. Whenever there is a change, mm -hmm. uh, fourth industrial revolution, yes. we had third industrial, you will realize that poor people continue to be poor. Yes. And rich people... And the rich even though there are changes. Yeah, of course. In of my course. other life, I'm a financial planner. Mm -hmm. There were times where if you come to my office, to uh, we want financial planning, I need to make you sign forms and I'll send it to Sanlam, Old Mutual, and it will take about two or three weeks for them to come back and say, Mr. Joe has got this life cover mm -hmm. and wara wara. Mm -hmm. New technology, mm -hmm. I do it on the phone. Wow. Punch in your phone and I have, so it makes our job easier but those who were unproductive in the old order mm -hmm. will be unproductive in the new order so now let's let's come let's come back here um pastor tia back again um to 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 the question of will the church survive COVID 19. i want us to look at the some of the members some of your peers mm. um in terms of the uh, of the livelihood mm. those that are going through the most mm. um, because in there's no more income what do you say to them? Is there anything which they can do um, from where they are or they should just wait for a miracle that somewhere, somehow, things are going to change for the better? I think the best miracle is whatever you put your hand to, to you put your hand to do it with all your might. The danger that I've seen, remember I've been in the ministry for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, most people believe to be called by God, number one, it means you must do nothing. And just Can you just preach. repeat that, that point again? Most people mm -hmm. believe to be called by God means you must stop doing anything. You must do nothing mm -hmm. and just pray and believe. Okay. Uh, and, and there's a lot of people who have been... You see, Jesus said to John, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most pastors are not feeding the sheep, but mm -hmm. they are feeding on the sheep. Hey, you really need to unpack this for me. Instead <laughs> most of... Most pastors are... Are not feeding the sheep they are feeding on the sheep they are feeding on the sheep can you just unpack that for what me? i mean is that they look at god as at, at the sheep as their source of income okay that's why i've heard a pastor say to me hey i saw you with my fish eh? that's a big fish <laughs> <laughs> fish referring to their members yeah and they're not okay. referring to big in terms you are big size wise they're not referring to them they're talking about the size of your bank the size account of the, of the pocket. and then you're on are we still in the ministry? Mm -hmm. So we look at church members in terms of what will they bring to okay. the church. Okay. Because we have edited uh, Philippians 4 verse 19, my God shall supply all your needs. Mm -hmm. And we say, my members shall supply all your needs. Wow. Not my God. Okay. So I teach you in church to believe God. For a supply. Okay. For a supply. Believe, believe God for, for a, a supply. supply. Okay. And I must teach you to give. Okay. Uh, and who do I believe in? In you. You believe God, I believe in you. Okay. Uh, 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 Mr. <laughs> Mutau, you are not tithing. <laughs> because okay. you believe God for a supply, okay. I believe in you. So this paradigm shift wow. is going to sift a lot of, 
uh, uh, dead wood. In actual fact, this topic <laughs> on its own, <laughs> we're gonna come. We're gonna come. Yeah, back we to need it. to do. We it need again. to come back to it and do justice. But I think uh, let's let's now come 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 back here, um, Pastor Tiwe. The question is still indeed: Will the church survive um, COVID COVID nineteen? And when you look at the, um, because now I think almost everyone needed to respond mm. um, and, and and use the social media platform mm. in mm. order for them to to talk or communicate, preach to their members, um, or you can call it to survive. Okay, in order for them Although to survive. Although it's too rough, okay. but <laughs> yes. Yeah, so for them to survive. So in reality, do you think that, because I'm t I want to look at the issue of agility. Do you think that the, the agility was good enough in mm -hmm. such a way that the transition was there? Imagine if you're a pastor who was preaching against Facebook, and now you have to call us to, you know, to, to come and, and connect with you um, through Facebook. You're opening mm. your first account of Facebook during lockdown. That agility for me, I think it, it, it is defeating, mm. you know, because the rate of change mm. in the church setup, it seems to be very, very slow. What can you say to young, young and upcoming pastors in terms of them responding and being wiser? Because in actual fact, when I, I, I wanted to introduce you, I wanted to say I'm sitting here with a well of wisdom. I think your experience in ministry can help mm. a lot of young pastors that are looking as well up to you or that are starting these ministries. Um, you asked the question, will the church survive this COVID pandemic? Yes. And my answer is in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Okay. And I will unpack it for you. And I also say to you, talking to Peter, mm -hmm. that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my, my church. church. Mm -hmm. And the gates of hate shall not prevail against it. You and I believe that... COVID-19 is from the pit of hell mm -hmm. because it comes to, it comes to steal, to, steal, to kill, kill, and, and to destroy. destroy. Mm -hmm. Now, let's unpack what Jesus is saying here mm -hmm. because he cannot just say it for sweet nothing. I'm seeing three types of churches here. Okay. And I, I'll show you the one that will survive. Wow. The first church is, I, Christ, mm -hmm will build my church, my church. Let's, let me put it level three or church number three okay church number one is i tibaboni mm -hmm. will build christ church okay so this one is more dependent on you and your abilities yeah i build it okay. and say this is the church of christ of christ okay the other one is i tibaboni will build my own church okay so this is my church I don't want to mention churches by name, but some names can tell you this is my own church, Kabula Church, for example. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to ask you, do, do we really have churches that, you know, um, no. by the look of things? And I think even this topic, mm. at some point we'll really come back to it because mm. um, there are so many topics that are now coming through mm. during COVID because um, somebody said when we were young, mm. we believed everything, mm. but when we are old, we ask everything. Yeah, we ask. So, the, the, of course, there will be a time where we we'll look at the ownership of, of the church, who owns this church. Mm -hmm. But I want you to, to continue with your point. Yeah, yeah. Um, we will definitely come back to this one some other time. So, we have me building my church. Mm -hmm. So, I build it. God is God. It's not part of it, and it's not God's church. Okay. I gave an example of Kabula Church. They can sue me if they want. Church number two is I build the church. Okay. My own way. And I say, Lord, this is your church. Mm -hmm. Church number three, no, they're actually four. I'm like Solomon. Solomon says three things. Oh, is there, is there, is there another wisdom yeah. coming through? Okay. Yeah. Church number three mm -hmm. is he builds the church. He says, I build my church, but it's my church. Okay. In India, Tibabon is for me. Okay. It's my church. Okay. This is the kind of church I can say, yeah, if you are tired of this church, you can go. Okay. Yeah, but there are, uh, there are six doors. You can leave, use that one. <laughs> That's... He built it. Have, when, have you ever heard that, 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 yes. that on the purpose? Yeah, I've heard it by <laughs> what, pastors. <laughs> what are the issues? What are the issues that are driving pastors to come um, into that? Are they angry at members? Mm. Um, is it because they cannot handle the pressure mm. that comes with ministry? What are the challenges? The, in most cases, I can say it in my language, Bonofura, they've eaten enough. Okay. So when they started, they cared about the flock. Now there's too much tithe and money coming in mm -hmm. in such a way that 
they can tell you where to get off. Mm -hmm. Now, that is church number three. In other words, God is building a church okay. for me. Okay. He built it. We built it together. I was committed. Now it's mm -hmm. my church. Mm -hmm. I can tell you where to go. Even when I die, that's mm -hmm. another topic for another day. Yes, correct. Before I die, I appoint my wife to take over. Or my son. That's my... He built it, mm -hmm. but it's now mine. Okay. They can be fighting... There's another church where there were guns as well. Mm -hmm. Because it is not God's church. If it's God's church, there will be no fun. But the proper church that will survive is when he himself builds his own church. Okay. He remains the, the owner, chairperson. The chairperson of that church. Of that church. Okay. I become the CEO okay. and I report to him. Okay. So the church that will stand is the church that was founded on a good foundation and whose head and leader is Jesus Christ. Okay. Very, very interesting and, and, and inspiring, um, Pastor, Pastor Tiba. And I, 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 I really like it. I really like the way you are also challenging us um, to also think differently. I also like it that you are acknowledging that there are also some inefficiencies in how we are running our, you know, should we call it our churches, mm. um, these ministries that, mm. that, that, that we run. But the last question that I want to ask you as I wrap up uh, for today um, is that do you believe that there is enough training for pastors. Um, of course, you, have, you did indicate mm. earlier on mm. that anyone in South Africa can start a church. There is no qualification where mm. you want a person to sort of meet particular cr criteria mm. for, for you to open a church. But do you believe that there is enough ministry training for pastors or young people that are coming into ministry um, so that they can be able to do things right? And what do you say again to those people that we look up to as you know, there is this common word fathers in the ministry. Those, you know, <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to go back, go yeah. to that one. But I saw someone as well on social media saying, um, "My daughter has been healed of um, of this sickness. Uh, my daughter has bought a car." When you see, when you want to, you know, you only zoom, uh, Pastor Tiwa, you zoom at mm. this at this lady or this daughter. You realize that this lady has <laughs> has gray hair. You know. She, and when you look at the pastor, of course, the pastor is very, very young. Um, is, is the gospel of fathers. Mm. So I want to, to understand, do we have enough material? Do we have enough content to train and nurture the new generation, um, you know, that will take over from the old guards? Do we have that? Um, what you have said, uh, it's a topic for another day. Um, it's... Uh, blasphemous to mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. if I call you my spiritual son. Because you can only be my son if you are born of my seed. Okay. So if you are my spiritual son, it means you are born of my spiritual seed. Okay. Do, you, do you see the danger there already? Yes, I hear you. And most yeah. spiritual fathers, it's not, I mean, I met a guy, mm -hmm. he's Three years my senior. Mm -hmm. I was in the ministry before him. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, Pastor Lejade, can I father you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> uh -huh. Which is mm -hmm. to say, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. He's saying, can I father you? Okay. I said, Have you, can you go around, meet small boys there with that, uh, maybe three or four years and say, mm -hmm. can I father you? They will go home crying. Because you don't ask to father a person, you just father them. Mm -hmm. If I'm not born of your seed, you can't be my father. So I say, I've got one spiritual father, mm -hmm. and that is God himself. Wow. So that is a, a very dangerous, and it's done also for financial gain. Okay. Let me touch on something that I, I forgot. I was on that train. The problem why most pastors look at the church as their bread and butter mm -hmm. is because they went to the ministry for the wrong reason. Okay. Now, uh, in the good old days when you say, I'm called of God, mm -hmm. it meant you are sacrificing. Okay. It meant to suffer for the kingdom. For the kingdom. Okay. Now, if you tell your family, I'm going to start a church, there's a nice uh, video that is doing trends. A guy calls uh, his father in Nigeria, Father, father I've got no money. I've got no money for food. Or what, or what. And the father church. says, Are you in South Africa? Start your church. <laughs> now, <laughs> start the church. That shows you that there are so many churches, okay. and those are the churches that will be sifted wow. because people are going to see through them. If you have to pay money to see your pastor, mm -hmm. now you can't see him. So we, that, that pastor is losing a lot of money. But having said that, uh, there is a danger in the church okay. and a serious danger mm -hmm. that we've got too many fakes mm -hmm. who are practicing because we do not have a law mm -hmm. to sift them. 
People come from their countries as criminals. Mm -hmm. They come to South Africa and start a church. Mm -hmm. And you ask them, they do not have, you, they, they've got no history for you to connect with them. That's a serious danger. We have spoken about it in parliament, mm -hmm. even with government, mm -hmm. that something really needs to be done. Wow. Because it's a free for all in South Africa. So COVID has brought some balancing. It's a balancing it's a, factor. It's a I balancing think it's a natural time. pandemic mm -hmm. to um, normalize things and cut out the bad ones. It's not as bad as we can say. Wow. It is not as bad as we can say. And thank you so very much, uh, Pastor Tiwa, for joining me in this, in, 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 in this conversation or leadership conversation. Of course, we did touch so many issues around the church. You be the judge. You decide on what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So on that note, I want to um, bid you farewell. I want to give Pastor Tiba Nijade an opportunity to say and um, to conclude our conversation. Will the church survive this pandemic? What is your last uh, conversation? My last words, especially to the leaders, mm -hmm. is Paul charges in the book of Timothy, he charges Timothy to say, preach the word. Mm -hmm. In season, in season and out of season. And out of season. I like the contemporary English version. It mm -hmm. puts it nicely. It says, preach the word, even if it's not the most popular thing to do. Okay. Uh, there is a temptation when you are a pastor to join the masses. Mm -hmm. But a pastor is not the one who joins the masses. It's the one who corrects the masses. Mm -hmm. Now, in this time, it is very challenging that if we do the right thing, God is able to supply our needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus, not the church members. Let us not look at the church members. Let us look at God wow. for our supply. Let us not look at our church members. Let us look at God who is our source. On that note, thank you so very much for watching our broadcast. If you want to follow the, our work, you can also come and visit our website, which is jjmleadershipfoundation.org. Um, or you can also check us on the um, Facebook, Instagram, and also Twitter, um, JJM Foundations. Or you can also follow me personally on my personal website, which is Joe Mudau. Or, or, or you can also check me as Joe Joseph Mudau. Thank you so very much for watching, and God bless you, and meet you at the top where you belong.